Step outside. Right. We would all like some quick and simple ways to improve our health. But we're bombarded with often conflicting advice. So, if you were going to do just one thing to improve your mental and physical well-being, what should it be? Maybe some beetroot to boost your workout, meditation to improve your immune system, or how about a bit of dancing to big up your brain power? I'm Dr. Michael Mosley, and this is Just One Thing, where each episode we'll explore one thing you can start doing today to improve your health or life in ways you might not expect. It's break time. I've been writing for nearly an hour now, and I'm feeling sluggish. So I'm going to do something that could improve my vision, perk up my posture, and really boost my mood and concentration. Ooh, I'm going to take a break. Ready, that feels better. Let's step outside. Nice and cold and windy out here. You might think that taking lots of breaks is actually going to make you less productive. But in fact, it's one of the best things you can do on a busy day, with a wealth of benefits for your body, your mind, and even your creativity. And taking a break outside is particularly good for your mental health, improving your ability to focus, reduce stress, and restore attention. So, is this something you need to do? I'm talking to John, who sits at his desk all day long. Let's see if taking a break is just one thing that he would like to put to the test. Hi, John. Hi there. Now, is it true? Do you spend a lot of time staring at your computer screen? I do. I don't particularly like it. I think it's kind of affected my eyesight. I feel kind of more tired at the end of the day. Yeah, it's just exhausting. And how often do you actually let your mind deliberately wander, stare out the window, do a bit of daydreaming? Well, <laughs> I'm always daydreaming. That's not an issue with daydreaming. But I would still be looking at the screen. What sort of things are going through your mind? I've got a new computer and it's tempting to click on these beautiful buttons. So I'm afraid that's not the sort of daydreaming we're looking for. We want you to take a proper break. Researchers have found that giving your mind a rest can help you become more focused, more productive, less stressed, and boost your creativity. Are you a creative person? I am. I do a bit of stand-up comedy on the side. I do lots of creative things. So here's your challenge. For the next week, I want you to take three breaks a day for about ten minutes each. Does that sound achievable? We can give it a go, yeah. Brilliant. So let's see if this makes you funnier. <laughs> let's hope so. I have some new material by, by the end of the week. I've asked John to take three 10-minute breaks a day, and we'll find out how it's going for him later on in the program. The idea that we might all benefit from micro-breaks emerged from research carried out in the late 1980s in the US. They found that workers who took short breaks, up to about three minutes, produced not only more accurate work, but had lower heart rates, suggesting a calming effect. Since then, the evidence for taking breaks from work has stacked up. Short breaks in particular seem to have a disproportionately powerful effect. Far from being self-indulgent, taking a break, particularly if you get up and move around, can not only stabilize your blood sugars, but also makes you more engaged, more productive, and enhance your enjoyment of work. It can also have a big impact on psychological stress. Being a surgeon, which is not something that has ever appealed to me, often requires making life and death decisions. That, understandably, can be very stressful. A study where they randomized surgeons doing complex laparoscopic surgery to either taking a five-minute break every 30 minutes or not found the surgeons who got the break not only had lower amounts of the stress hormone cortisol, but made fewer mistakes than those who just had to power through. And, surprisingly, the operations didn't take any longer than when they were done without the breaks. And the benefits you get aren't just inside your head. Another study of surgeons found that taking short breaks reduced joint pain as well as cutting levels of fatigue in half. And just doing something as simple as regularly looking away from your screen could really improve the health of your eyes. A recent study of almost 800 university students found that periodically refocusing on distant objects reduced symptoms of computer vision syndrome, which is stuff like eye strain, watering or dry eyes and blurred vision. Why? Well, when you stare at screens, you blink less and your eyes work harder to focus. 
Taking a break allows your eye muscles to relax and lessens the chance of eye strain. If you can, it's even better to get outside. Check out our episode on green spaces for more of the benefits of getting out into nature. You can catch it on BBC Sands. And a break where you let your mind wander can even boost your creativity. I'll be talking more about the benefits of mind wandering with an expert later on. But first, let's take a quick break to check in with John. Well, I'm midway through this week's challenge. It's been really quite busy at work, so I found it quite difficult to take breaks away from the screen. I spent some time in the yard and there were some spring flowers coming up. Today I'm speaking to you live from the local park. So I'm sitting in the rain, but I'm trying to look at things with different eyes, Michael. I'm trying to <laughs> get some creativity going and to let my mind wander. I'll persevere with it. Got a few more days. I'll keep at it. We'll catch up with John at the end of the week to see how he gets on. But now to find out more about how some downtime can lift our mood and creativity, I'm speaking to cognitive neuroscientist Professor Moshe Barr from Bar Ilan University in Tel Aviv. He has just published a book on mind wandering. Hi Moshe. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Now many of us feel guilty when we daydream, but you say that if we let our minds wander, that can actually boost mood and creativity. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Mind wandering actually plays an important function or functions in our mental and, and physical lives. So it's a power tool for creative thinking, for improving mood, for decision making, for mental resilience. I do urge people to respect the mind wandering and to allocate some time to it whenever they feel they're in a good uh, flow and stream of ideas. About half of our waking hours are dedicated for thinking inwardly. Right, so why does taking a break make you more creative and boost your mood? So everybody really wants to know how to be more creative. First of all, we have to understand that thinking is not only happening in our conscious mind. A lot of it is happening behind the scenes. So, for example, creative thinking requires a stage that we call incubation. So you want to generate a lot of ideas for a certain problem or a certain uh, issue that you want to be solved. And there's the initial stage of divergent thinking where you create as many ideas as possible, just as broadly as possible. Everything goes. There's no stupid idea. And then we really need to incubate on this and evaluate all, all these ideas. So any creative thinking requires a first stage of divergent thinking, but then it ends with a with a convergent thinking where you converge to the single um, solution. And a lot of it uh, requires this downtime where you really incubate all, all these thoughts. Now, I write books, and quite often I am accused of procrastinating. Now, my publisher will say, where is it? Where is it? Can I just say to her now that it's incubating? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Tell the editor to speak with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you tell me a bit more about your research into creativity and mind-wandering? In this simple but I think pretty powerful experiment, we had subject divided into two groups. In one group, we had subjects, keep in mind a short number, something with two digits, think, you know, 43. So now you have to keep in mind the number 43 throughout the experiment, and the experiment itself is just free associations. I give you a word, let's say shoe, and you have to say the first association that comes to mind, you might say sock, and then I say uh, watermelon, and then you say summer. And then at the end of this free association, I ask you, what was the number I told you before? And then you say 43. Okay, we move on. This is what we call low load, because you only have to remember two digits. We took the different group of subjects, and we had them remember a six or seven digits number. So this is much harder. And now, again, this, this group of people were engaged in free associations, and we looked at their associations again. And we compared the nature and the originality and creativity and associations that people in the two groups provided. And we noticed that those with a low load, and you can immediately make the, the, the analogy to your everyday life with the grocery release and all the emails that you have in your mind going, taking you away from, from, from the creative thinking. And indeed, we found that those with a low load that had to remember only two digits provided much more original responses. So when your mind is more loaded, you are... Uh, less creative, to put it more simplistically. And we found that if you think broadly and associatively, which is akin to creatively, then your mood improves. And what's nice about it is that we realize this connection is reciprocal. 
If you're happier, you're more creative. If you're more creative, you're happier. Brilliant. So what's happening in the brain when you are wandering? One of the biggest discoveries from the last uh, couple of decades in cognitive neuroscience was the discovery of what we call the default mode network. So in a typical fMRI experiment, we have these rest periods between one condition and the other. And implicitly, at least, we, even the scientists, assume that when you tell the subjects or your participants to rest, that their brain rests as well, or at least is not very active. But it turned out that our brain is intensely active during these rest periods. The default network, this giant network of cortical regions that are active when we're not busy with anything, is really the seat of mind wandering. So when we wander, we engage this, this big network. And when, when I'm taking my break, does it matter what I'm doing? So if I decide I'm going, oh, I know I have to write that article, but I'm going to let uh, the stuff incubate for a while, and I'm going to go and watch three hours of uh, television or go on social media for the next three hours, is that likely to be effective, or do I need some other strategy? We have to keep in mind that as amazing as our brains are, still they're limited in capacity, in, in ability, in resources, right? So if you take the break when you're in the right circumstances to wander creatively, you obviously don't want to load your mind with something else. But what I want to make sure that people understand is that mind wandering has a mind of its own, so to speak. When you realize that your mind wanders, but wanders to good places, just let it be there for a few more minutes. So that's the science. Let's check in with John one last time and see if taking a break, letting his mind wander, is just one thing he'd like to continue with. Well, it's the end of the week. Can you hear that? I have tried to get out a bit more now that the sun's appeared, and it's just been great just to reacquaint myself with the local area, the landscape. Thank you for the opportunity to, to listen to these, I don't know, are they, are they chickens? And I think it has made me a bit more creative. I do have some new material. You definitely should book me. I'm very funny. I'm pleased that John has been taking regular breaks this week. I've just slipped outside into the garden. I'm looking at the distant horizon, enjoying the sound of the birds and the traffic as well. Now, all this week, I've made myself take regular breaks, and I like the idea that I'm doing something that could help my eyes, my joints, make me more creative, and boost my mood. So there it is. Take a break and let your mind wander. Your brain and body really could benefit. So that's it. It's just one thing you can incorporate into your daily routine, which really could benefit your body and life. If you want to hear more of the series, then why not subscribe?